morning guys. Uh, I'm Vipula uh, from Augmented Human Lab, uh, University of Auckland. Uh, first of all, uh, let me ask a couple of questions from you. Uh, have you guys ever used a smartwatch, a smartwatch or a smart bag? Yes. Yeah. Uh, was this uh, devices has had any uh, hardware sensor? Yeah, uh, most probably. So, uh, usual uh, uh, smart devices uh, having hardware sensors uses this uh, photoplethonography uh, sensor or PPG sensor to sense your heart rate which uh, based on light and light reflection uh, which uh, give some calculation on the blood volume, uh, volume of blood running uh, through your uh, vessels. But uh, uh, this uh, PPG sensor is uh, uh, not available in most of the very cheap and uh, devices as well as if you try to uh, use this for a long time it will drain your battery very fast so we are addressing to uh, those two problems uh, by reusing another sensor that commonly available in the, uh, those kind of devices it's the accelerometer which can uh, identify subtle movements that happen into uh, the watch itself and it's uh, always available and very energy efficient compared to the PPG sensor. So first we uh, recruited 12 participants and we use Empatica E4 device which is commonly used in HCI communities uh, uh, to collect uh, accelerometer readings uh, uh, along with the intermediate intervals which can we which can use to calculate the heart rate and we uh, asked the participant to wear the e4 device for whole 24 hours and engage in, in their day-to-day uh, -day activities because we didn't want to restrict uh, participant for like in a static pose which uh, is common scenario in uh, similar literature we wanted to capture how it behave how Accelerometer can read the heart rate uh, when, when, even when people are moving and doing their day to day activities. So, um, after we collecting those data, uh, we uh, calculated heart rate out of the intermediate interval with the format the EFO gives us. And the accelerometer feed uh, was normalized uh, within a window of uh, 6 seconds and calculated uh, some features like median and standard deviation of the uh, normalized uh, window. So we created data, uh, 12 data sets for 12 participants. And uh, we randomly select one data set and split into 20% uh, 20 to 80% ratio for training and testing. And uh, we uh, Train, um, train six models out of the 80% of data and uh, tried out uh, these six different uh, algorithms A linear regression, neural network, quantile regression, random forest, uh, SVM, and SD boost. And we calculate how our prediction is different from the actual value given by the E4 device. And we calculate it as uh, the root mean square of to uh, value of uh, two uh, data strings. And we found out that random forest give the least error and we decided to move with uh, random forest. So we evaluated, uh, we trained uh, three different modalities to compare, we, uh, initially we used a baseline model which gives the average heart rate value of the training data. It's just a comparison modality. And we define a personalized, personalized model as, uh, like in the personalized uh, models, we trained and tested on uh, individual persons 
uh, data, not mixing others. For the uh, to check the generalizability, we use uh, leave one out method where we train with uh, training data of uh, 11 participants and test it against the uh, left out person. So uh, our evaluation, initial evaluation uh, started uh, the personalized model give uh, around a 1.58 difference uh, error between the actual and the predictor, while the best performing model give less than one beat per minute error. This is uh, very, very much uh, comparable with the existing literature. And, uh, and it uh, gives se uh, several times of uh, beat the uh, baseline model in several times. And in the case of generalized, uh, generalized model, also the average of, I can't say it's good, but uh, it has some uh, promising result for the generalized model. So initially I said uh, the model, the method is, uh, power efficient. So we investigated whether it's actually power efficient. For that, uh, I uh, used the commercially available uh, smartwatch. And I, uh, I run 10 sessions of one hour continuously monitoring heart rate uh, using a PPG sensor and another 10 session with using the method I propose. And I extracted the uh, Android logs and calculated the uh, actual power consumption within uh, that each, each session. And uh, we saw that uh, the PPG sensor consumes around 14 milliampere hour uh, per hour. And uh, the, our proposed method only consumes uh, 3.7 million people. So uh, we try to check whether our model is working across the devices. We have, like sometimes the the placement of the accelerometer and the orientation of the accelerometer and the thickness of the device may cause the effect on uh, may cause some effect on the prediction how the accelerometer sends the beats. So for that, uh, we uh, collected data for, uh, from uh, previous 12 participants for using uh, the Samsung watch. And uh, we uh, try to predict the heart rate of uh, using the uh, accelerometer data of the Samsung watch uh, using the models which we trained previously. And uh, the generalizability was all, all, all less, all like, it also gave uh, around a, a difference bit around 10 second, uh, 10 beats per minute compared to the uh, accelerometer. I think we, this could be improved if we trade with uh, data of few different devices instead of using one device. And uh, the heart rate variability is another important uh, measurement that people used, uh, but it's not uh, commonly see, uh, available in the commercial uh, smartwatches or uh, smart bands. So we try to extend our accelerometer method to predict uh, to calculate the heart rate variability. For that, we try to predict the intervals, time intervals between the each beat. And we, uh, for that, we have to introduce several more uh, features because the, the heart rate prediction, uh, for that we need only we predict once uh, 60 seconds, but here, we need to predict it very rapidly. And we calibrated the, we calibrated the window parameters that uh, suitable for the 
HR prediction. And we uh, tried, uh, uh, tried out the uh, models, uh, the modalities we uh, used in CS1, the personalized, generalized, and baseline. And uh, our uh, intermediate interval prediction method has predicted uh, the in intermediate intervals within uh, 61 millisecond differ from the the actual one. So this need to be, be uh, improved. But, uh, in the literature uh, at the moment, at that time, I didn't find anyone tried uh, predicting this with asteroid. And based on uh, the models, we try to uh, propose few different applications. One uh, is uh, one application is to assist teachers to identify the cognitive load of a uh, student. And we uh, implemented uh, uh, this application with uh, customized hardware, which only has uh, some screen, Bluetooth to communicate, uh, accelerometer, and a battery. And uh, we thought that by giving, uh, by showing the, the engagement information on the wrist of each kid, and if the kid sees that, they will demotivate. So we didn't want to show that to kid, and but we want to convey that to the uh, teacher. So we simply remove the polarizer of the. Um, uh, the screen, then without polarization filter, uh, nobody can see what's happening in the uh, screen. And we give uh, the teacher a watch, uh, glass with a uh, polarization filter, then uh, he can see how engaged the kids are, kids during uh, their studies. And we just piloted uh, this with uh, three uh, primary school uh, teachers, and they found it uh, really interesting because uh, they have used a met uh, the method where they ask kids about how you feel, how you feel, are you boring, like those kind of questions, and uh, they are not a bit reluctant to rely on the data, uh, rely on what uh, kids say. So they really wanted to uh, have something that gives uh, the engagement data without the kids uh, in all months. And one uh, drawback they figured out is kids are reluctant to use something that's not fun for them. So we need to do something <laughs> to make it fun for kids as well. Then another application is using our uh, heart rate prediction model. We try to do something to assist the disaster rescue people uh, by uh, showing up the people trapped after a disaster like a, uh, let's say, uh, earthquake. So it uh, calculates the heart rate uh, using uh, the complete model, and it streams that data to a web. So the, the web server the show the data in a map on a map uh, so that the rescue people can organize their resources to where to dig up and which location need uh, immediate uh, immediate care. And another application we tried is uh, to identify sleep deep uh, sleep uh, deep drive, uh, drivers that based on another like other research uh, inspired by other research and we implemented that on a uh, smartwatch and which simply uh, gives some feedback to drivers um, to okay now you are right don't drive take some rest and something like that yeah uh, those were the application we just piloted, but 
uh, with this uh, the energy efficient uh, heart rate monitoring technology there would be a lot more applications even it's not limited to these three and yeah that's all i have to tell you today uh, do you have any questions thank you for a nice presentation are there any questions I must say for myself, being an university professor, I like the idea of checking the engagement of the students. Like, uh, how could, I could perhaps use your uh, wristwatch on all of the students to see if they're really listening. Have you tried m measuring the uh, heart rate on more, uh, a greater vari vari yeah, variety of people? Uh, you had 12 uh, healthy, yeah, that was uh, like it's a good question. That was one of our limitation. Uh, we only have tried uh, those twelve persons, with uh, they are quite young, between the twenty-four to 30, 32. Mm. Uh, we had to test it against uh, the people, like older people, the people with uh, some heart diseases. So uh, we should expand our user base and see other. Uh, Participant base and see how it uh, generates for all the people. Did you wear a wristwatch? Uh, no, <laughs> I put it back. <laughs> Any other questions? What else? What else could be measured with this? Uh, you measured the heart rate. What else could you pressure or? Pressure, uh, I didn't try, but there Blood should pressure, be slight plausibility, but it won't be that accurate according to how I assume. Mm. But probably there should be a, a possibility to uh, get that information through the list recessor. Well, let's thank our speaker then.